What's going on everybody, it's Game and Box Reviews here and welcome back to another LEGO Marvel's Avengers news update. So with today's video we've of course got some brand new news for the game from MCM London Comic Con. It is finally finished and I can talk about all the cool stuff that was announced and pretty cool stuff, not a lot of stuff. I will admit there's not a lot that has been revealed but uh, you know they like to release things in small chunks, they like to uh, you know keep us anticipated for other stuff because if they show everything at once then what's the point in you know know getting excited because then you know everything so without further ado let's get to it Alright, so first things first, we're not necessarily going to be talking about this because honestly, just look at this list right now. Over 86 characters slash costumes. If I talked about over 86 uh, characters slash costumes in one video, it would be a very, 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 very long video. So there's probably no point in doing that, but I will make a few comments on them. So anyway, this is of course the roster for LEGO Marvel's Avengers so far, and it's looking so cool. So first up, we got Agent Carter. Agent Coulson, Agent Sitwell, Aldrich Killian, Amadeus Cho, America Chavez, Akron, Arnim Zola, Baron Strucker, and Batroc. Then we have Beth, which is of course the character that uh, Captain America saved in the very first Avengers movie, so that's pretty cool to see her. Wasn't expecting that kind of character, but still, still cool. Then we have Black Widow, Brock Rumlow, which is of course from the Winter Soldier. Really, really cool to see him here, but also you'll know Brock Rumlow as another name, but we'll get to that in a bit. And you can see also Bruce Banner, Bucky Barnes, Butterball, Captain America, Captain Britain, Cloud9, Cottonmouth, who's of course from the Serpent Society. Now, it's really cool to see that team in the game, or, well, just Cottonmouth for now, but it's possible that we might see more characters from the Serpent Society announced in the coming weeks and months, so that would be cool. Then we have Crimson Dynamo, who's of course a villain of Iron Man. Such a cool villain. Love that villain so much. I'm very glad to see that he's in the game. Then we have Crossbones, which is, of course, in the comics, that is what uh, Brock Rumlow becomes. Now, what's interesting about this is if you look in the gameplay and things like that, you can see when Arthur hovers over Brock Rumlow, I think it says classic. Not Brock Rumlow, sorry, uh, Crossbones. I think it says Crossbones classic. So maybe we're going to get um, Captain America Civil War version of Crossbones as well in a DLC pack and that'll actually be called Crossbones, uh, you know, Civil War or something like that. I could be wrong, but that would be extremely cool. Then, of course, we have Daredevil based on his comic appearance. Arthur announced that, of course, Daredevil will be able to swing around with his Billy Clubs now, so that is awesome to so be able to swing around the city with Daredevil, so that's great. We got Detroit Steel Armor, Devil Dinosaur, Helen Cho, Dr. List, Dum Dum Dugan, Egghead, Dr. Eric Selvig, Ellen Brandt, who's of course the woman from uh, Iron Man 3, um, the one in, uh, I think it was Tennessee, she was a pretty cool character, so it's nice to see, you know, her being in the game. Then we have Fandral, who's of course from uh, the Thor movies, like Thor the Dark World and well, Thor, <laughs> the God of Thunder. Then we have Fing Fang Foom, which is an incredible character. I absolutely love Fing Fang Foom, and the fact that he's in this game is incredible. And also the fact that he can transform into a giant version of himself. It doesn't affect his appearance in any way, it just makes him much larger. But if you want to be a giant flying space dragon, flying around New York City, stopping robbers, you can totally do that. That is just so cool. Then we have Gargoyle, Harley Keener, which is, of course, um, the kid played by Ty Simpkins in Iron Man 3, and he's also armed with a potato gun. Then we have Hawkeye, Heimdall, Hulk, Hulkling, Hulk Buster, Stan Buster, Squirrel Buster. Yes, I kid you not, there is a Squirrel Buster. Then we have a character called Fanbula Eddie. Apologies if I pronounce that um, name wrong, but Fanbula Eddie is actually, um, she can transform into Gorilla Girl. So that's really cool. She already looks awesome from that picture there in a human form, but a Gorilla Girl, that, that's just, that is so cool. And, you know, running around around New York City, climbing buildings and everything, and jumping super high as a gorilla, that's going to be a lot of fun. Then we have Iron Fist, who is of course another defender like Daredevil, so great to see him in the game. We also have Iron Man Mark 1, which was already in the first game, but we also have Mark 38 now as well, aka Ego, and I know a lot of people are going to be very happy about that one, because, um, you know, some people get mixed up, Hulkbuster and Ego, but they're actually completely different suits, so it's nice to see we have Hulkbuster and Ego in the same game. Bear in mind, that one you can't suit up in to. You can use it, but you don't have a suit up animation, which is a bit of a shame, but at least we get it in the game. Then we have Ironmonger, Iron Stan, Jane Foster, Jessica Jones, yet again, another defender. Love Jessica Jones, super excited about the Netflix TV show. Um, obviously, you know, they've chosen a more child friendly version of this character because Jessica Jones is more catered towards adults. But that being said, I would love to see Purple Man, aka Kilgrave.
grave in this game anyway because he did appear in a child friendly show you know Marvel's um, Earth's Mightiest Heroes Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes so if they could just put that character you know that version of Kilgrave in the game and just give him telekinesis th that would be my f fine with me really I just want Kilgrave and Jessica Jones but you know having Jessica Jones in this game and having her in a classic costume that is just so cool then we have Curse Loki an unknown character that I don't know about yet but I'm sure we'll find out in the coming weeks and months or something then we have Luke Cage again another defender I think that's all the defenders um, you know th this going to be in the Netflix show which is really great because you know that was I think Jessica Jones was the only defender that was missing in Lego Marvel Superhero so now you have all of them so you know you yes you don't get content from uh, Daredevil and Jessica Jones and things from the actual shows but once you finish watching those, you can be like, yeah, I want to run around New York City stopping random crimes as Jessica Jones or Daredevil or Luke Cage or Iron Fist. So it definitely works there. It's nice to see that, yes, those shows are going to be catered towards a more adult audience, but we still get the classic versions of those characters in the game. So that, that to me, is great. Then we have Trevor Slattery. We have a new character called Mantis, which is pretty cool. We also have Agent Hill, Maya Hansen, the Mighty Destroyer, Moon Boy, who could actually ride Devil Dinosaur. So if one player is playing as Devil Dinosaur, Dinosaur and the other is Moon Boy. Moon Boy can actually jump on top of Di Devil Dinosaur and ride around them, so that's really nice. Moon Knight is back again, which is great. I really love that character. I think he's really underrated, so it's great to see Moon Knight back again. Personally, I didn't feel he, like he was very fun to play as in the first game. I did like him, but I just felt he could do more than what they uh, offered. So, you know, Arthur said with every character in this game, they're going to try and um, up the ante and make them better than what they were in the previous game. So it'll be interesting to see how they've improved Moon night this time round. Then we have Kamala Khan, which is really cool to see. We've also got Nick Fury, Odin, Pepper Potts, Quicksilver, Red Skull, Rescue. Really great to see Rescue again. You know, I liked how um, we had b both, uh, you know, the MCU Pepper Potts and the classic comic book version of Rescue. So hopefully she can actually suit up into that as well, because that would be nice. We also have Scarlet Witch, Sentry, Sif, Scar. Scar is such a cool looking character. Guys, seriously, when I show that character, oh man. Just imagine running around Asgard fighting Dark Elves as Scar. I mean, that's going to be an absolute blast. Then we have Speed, Squirrel Girl, Stan Lee, Thor. We got uh, Jane Foster Thor, which is, of course, Thor in the comics at the moment. We've also got the Collector from the Guardians of the Galaxy, but more on him later. And then we have Tony Stark, Ultron, Vision, Volstag, War Machine. Now, this is interesting. War Machine. I really hope that we can suit up into Iron Patriot and all the different other War Machine suits. Maybe even some from the comics. But also be able to walk around as Rhodey outside of his armor. Because I really want that. I love how we can play as Tony and get into any suit at any time except Igor, you know. But you can still play as it. So I really hope Rhodey and Pepper and whoever else has that ability. I really hope they can all do that as well. And finally, we end on Wiccan and the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier obviously based on his appearance from the MCU movie. And yeah, that's it. That is the character roster so far and I am absolutely loving it. It's so cool. I'm really impressed by this character roster. 86 characters slash costumes so far but there could be more. I mean, that's crazy. It really is. But yeah, this character roster definitely gets a thumbs up by me so far. Alright, so next up, of course, we're going to be talking about some brand new gameplay details. Now, this isn't only just characters. Actually, I think Quicksilver is the only character I have to talk about, but there's other stuff I need to mention as well. But we're going to start off with Quicksilver, who's probably my most anticipated character for LEGO Marvel's Avengers so far. I mean, I'm just so excited to play as this character. He just looks so cool. And here's the thing. There aren't that many games coming out or actually available that allow you to play as Quicksilver. And even so, not just saying that, but as good as this. I mean, seriously, let, check this out, okay? Quicksilver now has the ability to create four versions of himself. That is really cool. So he can have a bunch of Quicksilvers on screen at once, plus the second playable character as well, and, you know, Quicksilver of yourself. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's all well and good, but what does that do? What actually helps with that? So basically, this means that you will then have five Quicksilvers, including the player character, um, running around fighting all the enemies in the vicinity. So you can be Quicksilver fighting um, one enemy and then a bunch of other Quicksilvers will be fighting loads of other enemies and then like your second playable character like say it's Scarlet Witch or Vision or whatever they'll be fighting someone as well so you'll have this whole battle with a bunch of Quicksilvers and then another character and all these Ultron bots or um, Jatari or Thugs or whatever you're fighting that is just so cool I love that so yes Quicksilver is going to be a very fun character in combat but not only that as I said you know previously 
it was officially confirmed that he can now also run up and down the sides of buildings, like I previously stated. But here's the cool thing about that. Um, if you look at some of the recent gameplay, you can see that is, yes, it's a very fun thing to be able to do in the open world. But not only that, you can also... Uh, do it in missions and it's actually important so there's certain uh, things that you charge up with Quicksilver and then he runs to the top of the building so that's pretty cool how it's not only a fun thing to do when you run around the city but there's also special reasons for it in the story mode as well so that's really great but anyway not only can he do that but his top speed when he's running is faster than Iron Man flying so think of how fast Iron Man flies in Lego Marvel Superheroes which in my opinion is pretty fast and then add that onto Quicksilver, make it even faster. That is pretty powerful. Plus, we have no idea what his top speed is. You know, Iron Man and all the other characters, we have no idea what their top speed is flying in this game. We know what their speed is flying in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, but it could have been boosted up just a little. And then on top of that, you got the Quicksilver speed. I mean, that's crazy. So for all the people that want to run through the streets of New York City, fighting crime and everything as Quicksilver, you can do that. You can run up buildings and everything. Now, obviously, they haven't been completely explained, but I would imagine, you know, if you can run up buildings, which you can, and you can uh, run super fast, which you can, I would imagine that you can run super fast up buildings as well. The only thing we're missing, honestly, that would make this the perfect speedster experience, even though it already is, in my opinion, is water running. You know, if you can actually uh, run on the water in the open world. Arthur actually hasn't ruled that out yet, so if you're hoping that Quicksilver can run on water at super fast speeds, don't lose hope just yet because they might announce that at a later date. But we'll just have to wait and see. Now, we just finished talking about Quicksilver, but next up, we have some other bits of information to talk about. So first up, DLC packs. I get asked about DLC packs a lot. Where do I pre-order? What DLC packs available, etc. Well, here's what they've said. DLC packs are said to be considered once the game is finally out there and, of course, available to purchase. Now, that's interesting all, but there's another thing to mention is the DLC packs. Arthur actually was asked about this at uh, London Comic Con this weekend, and he said, I think he said something about you know waiting and seeing you know you have to wait and see but they're I think what they're trying to say is there's something there's something coming but they're not going to talk about it yet which is really great to see because if you think about it Lego Marvel's Avengers it's Lego Marvel's Avengers it's about the Avengers so maybe with the DLC packs they want to kind of um, stir away from that and add other stuff maybe we'll get like a Spider-Verse DLC pack or something I would love that so much we could have Spider-Man Peter Parker and Spider-Gwen and Noir and 2099 I you know I could go on for hours about Spider-Man so I would love to see that if that was possible I'd also love to see a Captain America Civil War DLC pack I'm not sure if they could squeeze in Doctor Strange because that one is quite late in the year if they could that'd be great but I definitely think they can get Captain America Civil War and I really hope they do because that would just be so cool I, I'm so excited for that movie I mean Spider-Man in the same movie as Black Panther and you know pretty much all the Avengers except for Hulk and Thor that is going to be a blast I can't wait for that movie so hopefully we get some content from that Another thing to mention is an open world area has also been confirmed. So obviously we know of New York City, Washington DC, Hawkeye's Farm, Asgard, Malibu Mansion, and South Africa. But now we also know that a brand new one has been revealed and it's the shield base. Now basically what he means by that is it's the shield base that we see at the beginning of the Avengers. So the very, very beginning where we see Loki come out of uh, you know the portal and everything and Nick Fury's there and Hawkeye and etc. And uh, Dr. Eric Selvig, you know, all of that happens, that is where you can actually go back to and run around and free roam things. So that's really cool. But another thing is that somebody asked about um, the Collector. No, I think, what was it? It wasn't to do with the Collector, but Arthur mentioned the Collector. And he said, obviously we know the Collector is in the game and that's great. But he says you actually have to go to nowhere and then you meet the Collector and you go into his shop or whatever. And um, he actually holds the red bricks. So he's the guy you go to to buy red bricks. Now that's really interesting. Why would we have nowhere if you know this is this is what i'm trying to work out obviously if you know the lego games you'll know that red bricks are always stored somewhere in an open world hub so while they haven't confirmed it i'm guessing nowhere is a hub world but i think they did ask if the guardians are in the game and i think arthur said probably not all of them so i'm a bit confused by that but maybe they're not allowed to add it into the full game and then we'll get a guardians of the galaxy dlc pack instead so the guardians will come in a dlc pack but we can have nowhere early so for when they come out we have a hub world and we have those characters as well it's really hard to think about but it'd be great if that's what they're going to do because you know 
I just don't see them missing out on that movie because that movie is incredible. Guardians of the Galaxy is just brilliant. So the fact that we can go to nowhere and go to uh, the collector's shop and everything, I just don't see them missing out on that opportunity. So fingers crossed. And also, I've also said that there's eight hub worlds in the game. There's eight hub worlds that you can explore. So if you think about it, you've got New York City, Washington DC, Hawkeye's Farm, Asgard, Malibu Mansion, South Africa, Shield Base, and nowhere that makes eight so it seems like all eight of them have been revealed if they count nowhere so yeah but anyway enough of that final thing to mention is there are 250 gold bricks in the game that's a pretty good number in my opinion um i know a lot of collectors and things will be really happy about that i i don't know what it is i i try sometimes to try and get all the gold bricks but i think my main focus is just getting all the characters and all the vehicles and i guess you know unlocking the hub worlds as well because that's the thing that i'm most excited about you know i want to play as this character i want to drive this vehicle i want to go to this area so that's what i always focus on but i did get the platinum trophy for lego batman 3 and i'll probably want to try and do that with this game as well Alright, so next up, obviously, we've just talked about um, a bunch of brand new news. We've talked about the character grid and everything. Now we're going to move on to probably the thing that everyone gets excited about, the screenshots and brand new gameplay. So first up, here we have an extremely awesome screenshot of uh, Peggy Carter, Agent Carter, in the game, looking really cool. What I love about this design is they chose the design from the actual Agent Carter TV show because they could have went with the one from the first Avenger, the brown suit she wore, which it'd be fine with. I would be completely fine with that design. But every time I see her with a red hat and the blue suit and everything, I just kind of like to think of that as Peggy's costume. It just looks so cool, so I'm very glad to see that. And of course, you know, if you're late to the news or you're a newcomer, hello, welcome. <laughs> but if you're a newcomer... Um, and you're excited about the Asian Carter content, you'll be happy to know that Hayley Atwell is actually reprising her role. So you will hear, when you hear Peggy speak in-game, it's actually Hayley Atwell, and that's great. And she'll narrate some of the missions, you know, because the side missions in the main game that involve her. Basically, um, when you're in the open world of New York City, you can actually find old retired Agent Carter, and she'll you can go up to her and she'll tell you a story of, you know, one of her older missions. And then it actually flashes back to the 1950s, and then you're in the 1950s and all the cars and the people and everything have changed to suit that era and then you're actually with the young agent carter in the design that you see here and you actually get to help her you know in that quest so you get to play not only do you get to hear her narrate the quest but then you also get to play through it in new york city and fight you know whatever was around back then in the 1950s i just think that's awesome that is such a cool feature and i really 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 hope that we can free roam in the 1950s version of new york um you know outside of those missions as well so that'd be great anyway next up of course we have some gameplay right here of agent carter and you can see here you know she's walking about just do 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 and then boom look at that she's shooting her gun what i love about this is i think she actually takes a gun from a handbag and it just looks so cool and yes you know you see a lot of characters in lego marvel superheroes and lego marvel's avengers and all the other lego games that have guns and it's kind of i guess you could say generic you know you expect them to all have the same uh, animations but despite peggy having a gun she holds it completely different to every other character, she shoots it completely different, and she puts it away completely different. So, Agent Carter, which I'm very happy to see, isn't just some character with a gun. They've actually made her very unique and feel exactly how you'd want her to feel. So, if you're a fan of that show, you're going to love, you know, their interpretation of that character in this game. Next up, we have a very cool screenshot of Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy, and we also have some really nice gameplay as well. So in this screenshot, we can of course see Devil Dinosaur in New York City with Moon Boy riding on the, on the top of them. Like I said, you know, Moon Boy, if, you, if one player is playing as Moon Boy and the other is Devil Dinosaur, uh, Moon Boy can jump on top of De Devil Dinosaur and ride around them, which is really cool. And I'm curious to know if you have to be in two player to do that. I would imagine you wouldn't. I'd imagine you could just be uh, one, one uh, character is Moon Boy, the other is Devil Dinosaur, and then you can just just hop on top of them. Question is, can we use Devil Dinosaur in the story mode as well? Because if you remember in Lego Jurassic World, you couldn't actually use uh, like T-Rexes and things like that. You couldn't use those kind of dinosaurs in the story mode. You could only use them in free roam and you had to go to certain areas to actually be able to use them. Unlike in this game, because Devil Dinosaur is actually accessible at any time. He's in the actual grid. You don't have to go to some secret location just to play as Devil Dinosaur. You can play as him anywhere you want. And in this gameplay, we do see him walking about in the mission, but I'm curious to see if that's just because it's a debug mode where they can, you know, show off anything they want. But in the final game, he might not be able to do that. But we'll have to see. Also, if you look in the background, 
you can see a uh, closing down sale, uh, like little poster on the wall. And I think that's also a picture of Asgard as well. And Asgard is, of course, one of the hub worlds that you can visit in the game. And I'm really excited about that. One thing I do hope for the um, different hub worlds is obviously we know that New York City has random crimes. So I hope they've kind of added something similar to all the other hub worlds. So maybe there'll be like random uh, dark elf attacks or frost giants or whatever, you know, when you're running around that area, that hub world. I think that would be a lot of fun. So next up, of course, we have the actual gameplay of Devil Dinosaur. You can see him walking around here and everything, just smashing up stuff. He just looks so cool. I mean, he's just this huge, big, red dinosaur. I mean, Devil Dinosaur, I, I really did want to see him in the game. I know a lot of my friends like uh, Francesco and Simeon, they wanted to see this character in the game. And I would have loved to see it, but I don't know. I just I kind of doubted it. I kind of thought, I don't know if they'll be able to put a big, giant T-Rex in this game. But there you go. That just goes to show how far TT Games can go to put characters in the game. I mean, we get a big giant red dinosaur to run around with. That is just awesome. And of course, you can see here just a quick look at him running around in Central Park in the main game. And it just looks so much fun. Next up, we have another screenshot of an extremely awesome character in the Marvel Universe. And now I already said that Quicksilver is one of my most anticipated characters to play as in this game. But Fing Thang Foom is definitely up there with the best. I mean, this character all already, you know, you know that Fing Thang Foom is awesome in the Marvel comics and shows, etc. All that good stuff. He's a brilliant character. But in this game, he's so much cooler than I ever expected. And this is a character I didn't expect seeing because you know how I said I just wasn't wasn't thinking they'd be able to add a you know devil dinosaur so I didn't think they'd be able to add a giant flying space dragon and boy was I wrong I mean this character is so cool and you won't see it in the gameplay that I'm gonna show in a second but he can actually increase his size so if you you know you see uh, Fing Fang Foom in a video or something and you're like oh I don't like his size it's too small it's a big figure Fing Fang Foom should be massive he can literally grow way bigger than that I think if I remember correctly um, if you know Hawkeye's farm that is one of the many hubs in the game. I think Hawkeye's house, I think that's the size it, uh, that Fing Fang Foom can actually grow to. And honestly, that's pretty big. So just imagine flying around New York City as this giant space dragon. I mean, that, that in itself sounds incredible and I can't wait to do it. Then of course, we can see here, we can see some gameplay and we can see him, he's just standing around, he's looking at all the people, he's just looking really angry and he's just punching people. So he has some simple punching attacks, which is really nice. And then I think he goes over here and he actually there we go. Yeah, there we go. He's He has a special attack where he blows fire everywhere. It's just awesome. You know, it's typical Fing Fang Foom, what you'd expect. And here you can see him flying as well. I mean, he looks so cool flying. But just imagine being even bigger than that in New York City with these giant wings flapping and just terrorizing the streets of New York City, blowing up cars. Maybe even if you want to make Fing Fang Foom good, you could always stop a random crime. You could stop a bank robbery as Fing Fang Foom. Man, that sounds incredible. I can't wait for this game. I really cannot. Next up here we can see Crimson Dynamo. Yes, Crimson Dynamo is in LEGO Marvel's Avengers, one of Iron Man's worst enemies, so that's really cool to see. Personally, I was expecting him to be a big figure, but who knows? He might transform into that. Maybe he has a big figure transformation. Maybe he has another suit. You just never know. But for now, I love it. I think he looks great. I love his attacks and everything, which you'll see in some gameplay in a second. But uh, one thing I wanted to mention is where he's actually standing in this screenshot. This is a scene from the very first Avengers movie where Loki and Hawkeye Hawkeye, Hawkeye's being mind controlled by Loki um, but you know th those two they're trying to do something I can't remember what it is but uh, Loki's actually wearing a suit and then when he goes outside and they all realize you know all the people realize that he's actually Loki um, the, the suit disappears and then he's in he's got his helmet and everything and Cap comes down and they have a fight that's basically the scene so judging by you know the fact that Crimson Dynamo is walking around that area I'd imagine we get to play through that scene, we get to fight Loki as Captain America, and maybe they'll um, speed the scene up a bit, maybe we're actually playing as Iron Man and Captain America fighting them, or maybe like they're doing with the Hulkbuster fight, you're actually, one person is Captain America, and then another is Widow in the Quinjet. Something like that would be really cool, but you know, we'll just have to wait and see. So here we can see some gameplay of Crimson Dynamo, he's running around, he's jumping, there isn't much gameplay here because we don't see a lot of them, but it's just nice to get a little glimpse of what this character can do in the game and you know like I said we haven't seen a lot but he still looks very cool now this character right here is called 
Egghead. And Egghead, honestly, I don't know a lot about this character. They barely showed anything off from him at all, just him walking about, but at least it gives you confirmation on the fact that this character is in the game. So if you're a fan of Egghead, then you'll be happy to know that, yes, he is playable in LEGO Marvel's Avengers. But obviously, we don't know how he's going to be playable yet. And also, it'll be interesting to see if he's in a quest or something. Maybe he's a quest giver and you unlock him after you do all his quests or something. We will just have to wait and see. Here we can see another really quick look at another character, and this is of course Curse, who is from Thor The Dark World, the movie, and we actually get to play through content from this movie, which is very, very cool indeed, and he also seems to have the exact same design from the Thor Dark World uh, DLC pack that they had for LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, which I'm completely fine with because I thought he looked awesome, so it would be nice to see, you know, what new abilities he has at this time around. Now this character right here is named Akron, and sadly we didn't see pretty much any gameplay of what this character can actually do in the game, but if you're a fan of the character then you'll know what, you know, they'll actually be able to do. But I really like the design, it's a very cool looking design, it's very unique, you know, it's very different to uh, most characters that you're going to see in the game, because they all have like very su super heroic costumes and things like that, but Akron, no, it's, it's more... It's more kind of like a knight, if you know what I mean. I don't really know a lot about this character, pretty much nothing at all, but I'm looking forward to learning more about it, uh, you know, once the game comes out. Because this game, you know, these LEGO Marvel games, they're always a great way of learning about new characters in the Marvel Universe. And then next up, we can also see another character named Mantis. Now, they didn't show much of this character either, so I decided to group them together, but she still looks really cool. Again, I don't really know of her abilities, but if anyone does know, please let me know. After this video, you know, I'll of course look and do some research and things and try to find out more about the characters because you know when I don't know about a character I get more excited when I don't because it's like I wonder what this character can do and then I start doing read and I'm like whoa th they can do this and that and it just gets me really excited in the end. Here we can see another Hulk-like character, and it is, of course, Scar. And Scar is just so awesome in this game. I love his design and everything. You know, he's got the green skin of the Hulk from Avengers Age of Ultron, but he's got, like, a more warrior type of design to him. He's got the long hair, the really awesome weapons and everything. I think he'd probably be on my top characters to play as in the game, like Quicksilver and Fing Fang Foom, and I guess Devil Dinosaur as well, because, I mean, just imagine going to the Asgard hub world as Scar and fighting Dark Elves. I mean, that would just be so much fun. Fingers cross you can do that whenever you want because if you look at the Hawkeye um, hub world you know the Hawkeye's farm hub world there's actually a lever in Hawkeye's farm you pull down and then Ultron bots come out of nowhere and you get to fight uh, waves of them so hopefully there's somewhere in Asgard on the Asgard hub world where you can pull a lever or maybe something happens and dark elves just start spawning you can just start fighting them because that would just be really cool here we can see some gameplay of Jessica Jones. Now in this video, sadly, we don't see much of her abilities and everything, but what I do know is she can fly, she's got super jumps in the game, uh, she's super strong and everything. She's basically exactly how you would expect Jessica Jones to play in the game, and I'm so glad she's in this game because she just looks so awesome. It's really great to see, I think I said this when I was talking about the character grid, but it really is great to see, uh, you know, how... Even though Jessica Jones is more catered towards a more adult audience, it's great to see how they actually managed to get a more child-friendly version. Hopefully they can do that with Kilgrave as well, because, you know, you've got Jessica Jones, I want I want to see Kilgrave as well, and we're getting Daredevil, I want to see Kingpin and Elektra, and maybe even Punisher if they can throw him in as well, because, of course, he's going to be in Daredevil Series 2. So if we get all of that and more, that would be fantastic. Now here we can see Camilla Khan, who's of course Miss Marvel, and I was very curious to see, you know, how they were going to do her abilities in this game, because, you know, when you see in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, we saw how well done Mr. Fantastic was in that game, and then they did LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham, and I was surprised, because I saw they try, you know, they, they figured out even more ways they could make a character stretchy and everything, you know. The, what I loved was, the fact is that Mr. Fantastic and uh, Plastic Man, they played completely different, and they felt completely different and everything, and that is just great. And you can clearly see right here that Kamala Khan is no different. They've really added a bunch of unique fighting animations and everything. And I just love how this game isn't finished. You know, Arthur says several times, because there was a few bugs in the demo, but Arthur says uh, several times, you know, this game isn't finished. So once we get the final game, all of this will look even better. And that's, that's amazing. 
Right here we can see a member of the Serpent Society, which is of course Cottonmouth. And check this out right here. Look, he actually has his own special move when he chucks the guy in the air and puts him in the mouth. I mean, that's just so cool. I really wasn't expecting that from a character like this. Don't get me wrong, Cottonmouth is awesome and I really hope we see more of the Serpent Society team, you know, in this game. But I wasn't expecting that type of character to have that type of ability. That's just really cool. I'm really impressed by the fact that they added that. So yeah, Cottonmouth looks really cool and I'm looking forward to seeing if we might see other members of that team in the game. Now here we can see Stan Lee in the game and obviously already we knew that Stan Lee was going to be awesome. He has his own Iron Man suit and he has his own Hulkbuster suit aka the Stan Buster which is great. But here we can see he has even more abilities. So he actually has his own version of Captain America's shield which of course gives him the ability to throw a shield and everything like that. And he also has Captain America's awesome melee combat. But if you check right here in a second I think he uses, wait a second he's going to use it. There we go. Yeah so now he's using his bow and arrow and he's actually shooting pencils so that's Hawkeye. So he now has Iron Man, Captain America, and Hawkeye abilities, which is really cool. And I would imagine, my guess is because Arthur, when he was, uh, you know, talking and playing the game, he hadn't seen any of this stuff yet. So this was definitely just added to the game, which is really nice. But I would imagine if, um, you know, if he has all those abilities in the in the full game, in the full build of the game, the final build, he'll probably have Quicksilver's speed, Scarlet Witch's, um, you know, mind control, and hopefully, or also maybe uh, Mjolnir as well. It'd be so cool if he has Cap Shield and Mjolnir. I mean, he will be unstoppable but also one thing I really want to mention is Stan Hulk 2.0 I really hope we get Stan Hulk with the Age of Ultron kind of skin color in the game because I just love Stan Hulk so much I mean getting to play as that final you know that version again that was just so much fun to run around as a Stan Lee looking Hulk and I think it was one of my favorite big figures in Lego Marvel Super Heroes so if we get that again but improved and we can wall climb and we can do super jumps and all that good stuff it would be so much fun so fingers crossed we do get Stan Hulk again so the last two things I have to mention is just a quick bit of gameplay right here of the Gemini Iron Man suit which is of course from Iron Man 3 looking really cool and of course there's probably more Iron Man suits that we don't know about yet but it's just nice to see how many we already have. And then of course if you see here we can see Hulk he's just standing around but check this out he has a brand new transformation back to Banner which is really cool. I actually like that one more I think it's more movie accurate but he also has another transformation as well which is completely different. It's really great though because I know a lot of people were like you know it was cool when we saw in the trailer that yes Banner can still transform into Hulk and vice versa but let's hope he gets a new transformation maybe similar to what we see in Avengers Age of Ultron and we got just that which is great and you know we haven't seen all the transformations for all the other characters so there might be brand new unique transformations for characters that were in the first game that are coming back but they have a new transformation animation so that should be very interesting to see. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. I mean, I hope you're as excited as I am about all this awesome news for LEGO Marvel's Avengers. What I love about it is, yes, you know, all of it is really cool. I'm very excited about the game, but they've barely scratched the surface. You know, we're going to find out so much more. We've barely seen anything of the open world. I really hope at some event soon, you know, before launch, I really hope they start showing off the random crimes. Because I think I'm like the only person that really talks about that feature. Really being able to run around New York City and see like a bank robbery. Or, or a car thief or something like that and being able to actually stop them I'm telling you right now that's gonna be a huge impact on the overall replay value of this game you know you may stop playing this game every once in a while but when you come back and you play as a different character and you go stop crimes and things that's really gonna be a lot of fun because that was one of my favorite things about you know the spider-man games back in the day spider-man 2 you'd be swinging around and all of a sudden there'd be a robbery or a or a mugging or anything like that so it's really cool to see that Lego Marvel's Avengers is doing that is doing that and adding that feature which is great now I just want I want to apologize for the delay on this video because it was supposed to be out you know the day after uh, London Comic Con finished but sadly I've been having some issues and I haven't been able to finish the video so sorry about that but despite you know the delay I do hope you enjoyed the video. Alright guys so I want to thank you very much for watching stay tuned for lots more videos real soon and as always please remember to like, comment and subscribe.